Knowledge is power, and this is Powerful Stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Week at 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with your host, Jen Solis. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. That's 731-1230 or toll free. Toll free. 1-866-820-5528. That's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is Jen Solis. Hi, welcome. Good afternoon, everybody. This is We Can 702, Nevada's Wellness News, Nevada Cannabis News. Um... (laughs) We have in our studio Kurt Dukach, Raymond Fletcher, Perry Heitchu, and William Beach Baker. Today we'll have a guest on, Tommy Grow, to talk about a new way to dab and to extract. Um, but starting the top of the hour, we'll have our local news. Raymond, what's going on in the local news? Well, Jen, we have a lot going on today at 7.30 a.m. The city, the Las Vegas Department of Planning, begin accepting licensing applications for medical marijuana. So, um, uh, how many applications were received this morning? Uh, I don't have a number on that one yet. Well, do knowing I? smokers, they'll do it at the last <laughs> minute. The, <laughs> That's I, just what happened at Clark County. I think what they have like two hundred on the last day or something. Uh, well, there was only one hundred and sixteen. They they're on stoner time. Leave them alone. <laughs> but well, they got a lot of paperwork to do in this uh, next week and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Exactly. <laughs> the application cycle will be open for ten business days. It will close at three p.m. on Wednesday, July twenty third, and that is at three 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 North Rancho Drive. Applicants received prior to or after the application period will not be accepted. And also for that um, City of Las Vegas application process, there's a paper that you have to have that is signed off in person, and you have had to have taken this class to get that paper. Um, I just so have happened to take that class. So if you guys are looking for this one last piece of paper that you have to have for the City of Las Vegas, um, contact me or we can, and I know a few other people that do have these papers. So don't I'll- get caught with your pants down. I'll be rolling around, you know. It's a gambling <laughs> town, you know. How much do they want to pay? <laughs> mm-hmm. okay, okay, we also have uh, money, money everywhere, but no place to put it. Medical marijuana dispensaries search for banking options. I know the banking options, and I have them up on our Me Can, We Can website in the discussions forum that say banking for the, um, Nevada. I think, isn't it, uh, what, what is it? I think it's a credit union. There's like one place. I, I put it up in the discussions portion. And there's also other options where you can pay a, a third party and they get a ticket and then that ticket goes to the to the um, dispensary somehow. I think you were telling me about, Perry. What is it? It's some kind of like non-payment option where you're just getting a ticket and so there's no money actually going into the dispensary. Something like that. Well, that system has been tried before here in Nevada and it... Uh, <clears throat> It didn't go so well. What the guy's idea was is you walk into the store and you buy uh, coupons that are worth X dollar value, and then you use those to exchange it for cannabis, but that uh, ultimately did not hold up in court. So, oh, so, okay. So, you know, it's unfortunate, but, you know, th- there was a period of time where these dispensaries were opening and closing, and people were just really trying to get creative with the, the loopholes in the law that they perceived or that they had their counsel look at. But, you know, it was just one of those things, and, and here we are. Luckily, we were able to get state regulation on it and kind of help to clarify some of these issues. I think Kurt's looking it up on our discussion page. What was the bank? Haven't found that yet. Okay, maybe an activism. Well, you know, um, there's there's actually somebody in Colorado that's suing the IRS over the whole banking issue. Really? What, what's going on with that? Well, apparently they're not able to deposit. The banks won't accept their marijuana money. Okay. So they're unable to set up with the federal payrolling system. I don't recall what the actual name of it is. So then the person is being fined, but they're paying their taxes in cash down in Denver. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> I'd be paying it with ta- with cash and with pennies. <laughs> well, they have well, they have no way to bank, so the only way is to pay by cash. And because they're paying by cash, they're being uh, penalized an additional ten percent for non electronic transfer. Well, okay, it's First Security Bank of Nevada. Mm-hmm. First Security Bank of Nevada will take uh, medical marijuana dispensary money. Um, so what else is going on with the with the city and with the county? North Las Vegas had an interesting meeting, didn't they? They approved all of the of the zoning last week. Yeah, uh, Kurt. Yeah, they approved. They approved it, and uh, the, they actually lowered some of their fees. Uh, in turn, and that uh, if you're opening multiple businesses, uh, the fees actually drop. So we also found out that Apex does have um, does have you know um water and sewer and stuff like that to it the water is brackish when which means actually salty it's kind of something you might expect but um the the groundwater is brackish but uh that just means extra filtering right yes okay they have desalination things you can buy to to clear that up thanks perry now we have i think we have Henderson. henderson news henderson henderson city council you know, with their mayor who is being sued for term limits or whatnot. Uh, Andy Hafen? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Unanimously supports medical marijuana. And they started, believe it or not, accepting applications yesterday. Yep, that's the truth. The five-member council unanimously approved the series of codes and zoning regulations for medical marijuana, including location restrictions, fees, license classes, and the application process. There was no public opposition at the meeting, and these codes were first introduced back on June seventeenth. So, it was pretty tame um, as as meetings go. You could see the mass exodus that happened after the approval. It was approval, 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 then the mass exodus. Um, we got to see that July and August and September are flood months in in Las Vegas. Yeah, the flood control district was showing up at all the different uh, municipalities at all their meetings this uh, last week. So they, they, had, they had their special special commencement announcements for them, and they gave them all certificates and everything. But they were warning us, hey, it's going to rain. In Good. North Las Vegas and Henderson, it was, almost, it was almost like the same meeting, except different people. It was like, it's like cannabis and flood control. And then in, in Henderson, <laughs> cannabis and flood control. It was like, oh, wow. That, that sounds interesting. The The police in uh, Henderson, they raised concerns about potential for violent crime around the mostly cash establishments. Obviously, they haven't been paying attention to the news in Colorado. In fact, crime has gone down. We've discussed that before. But the city leader stated that they'll handle that issue. With it, and this is what um, the poli- the assistant manager said. With the increase in revenue from these establishments, we will utilize that money to deal with any of the enforcement that will be required due to the criminal activities that may be associated with these businesses. So it sounds like it's a cash grab. Well, you know what the thing is, is that, you know, if they can't control you through monetary slavery, they control you through fear. And I think that in, in, they've been touting this over and over and over again. Oh, crime's going to rise. Crime's going to rise. And yet what has historically happened time after time, city after city, state after state? Well, I've uh, I read an article recently where some of the law enforcement people from, <clears throat> from Alaska that are kind of working against the marijuana legalization campaign up there have expressed concerns that they are not going to have the budget to enforce this new emerging marijuana industry and they haven't you know budgeted for all this and the state doesn't know what to do but then the other side is coming back they're like look you know you're not accounting for the six million dollars a year you're you're going to save and you know not arresting people and the amount of money that the state will save and not incarcerating people and the probation office and it's just like a uh, like a a snowball effect you know there's a lot of money that's going to be saved on the back end but you know it's just all about people's budgets people want to preserve that and nobody once you have a budget you don't want to shrink it ever for any reason so of course that's what they're trying to preserve is definitely their what would they call like operational capacity or whatever it definitely means shifting that all over from you know a detainment to now um code enforcement instead of detaining people and arresting people and these property seizures which is millions of dollars um from these busts why don't you 
and, and, and if you go forward with this, say, you know, why don't you guys focus on something else besides um, marijuana and cannabis? Why don't you guys focus more heavily, you know, on um, pills, on uh, ecstasy, on, you know, MDMA well, or what or, I would like to see you know, the white slavery, Oxycontin. Well, you know, those are some issues that could use some more budgeting. Well, what I would like to see the local police department here in Las Vegas focus more on is property crime. You know, they don't respond when your house gets broken into and they don't take fingerprints. And that's really, really frustrating for a lot of people who uh, <clears throat> who feel very vulnerable in that situation and they reach out to the people who are supposed to serve their community and they're just like, look, you know, there's really nothing we can do That's unless true. the neighbor saw something and you got a license plate. Not and even then. Like, yeah. oh, man, well, you know? not even then, Perry, because there, there was a neighbor girl that tried to break into my house and my daughter was sitting on the couch and my daughter didn't answer the door because she didn't want to talk to this girl and mm-hmm. this girl goes around the back and have, has gloves on is opening our back sliding glass door. My daughter was just like calling me going, what do I do? what I do I said call the police call the police and and she's like come home come home she's over 18 years old at that time and I said I don't need to come home just call the police and they'll they'll help you deal with it by the time I got home she said the police wouldn't do anything I said what no they don't Uh, I was uh, I was out of town and I came back to my house being burglarized and when I called the police they asked me if the if they were still there I said no they said come on down and file a report they wouldn't even come to the house and and file a report at the property and remember they wanted to institute a more cops tax so you know here in Clark County and they can't even do their basic functions they won't respond to auto accidents but back to the money situation let's look at it as a whole you have a lot of these states that are now decriminalizing. You have medical marijuana. More and more people are saying, hey, let these low-level offenders, you know, who have nonviolent drug offenses, and they're not marijuana offenses, you know, let's let them out of jail. You know, let's yeah. come on. It's time. You save money in your budgets that way. You know, you're able to redirect those funds to other well, areas. Well, who has the power to do that? Is that a purely thing for the governor to do? Does he have the ability to pardon mass amounts of people rather than just one individual at a time? Or does, is that a legislative issue? Or You know, I believe that that, uh, that is not only... Um I think it's a local jurisdiction level also. I think the district attorney would have a lot to do with it. Oh, okay. Um, and it, I just certainly with the with the crimes that are be, um, under federal, you know, not federal offenses. Right. I was um, just kind of then actually that. you as you go up to federal offenses, then you then you have um, like what Supreme Court and stuff like that involved. Or I, I don't know. I gotta, maybe we can find one of the advocates out there that listens to our show. Maybe they can get in contact with you and we can have a conversation on a show about this. I think this would be very educational. Okay, well, speaking of phone callers, we do have somebody on the phone calling. Um, this is Kitty. Kitty, hello. You're on the Weekend uh, 702 show. Hello, Kitty. Meow. Hello, Kitty. Are you there? Seems we lost our Kitty. Maybe we should check the pound. Mm. Poor we'll try kitty. to get her back. We'll Poor Kitty. <laughs> kitty, quit it. <laughs> Bad All right, thing. back to local news. Do we have anything left? City, I'm done with my local Clark news. Clark County, Henderson. Well, we, do have, we do have the meeting tomorrow at the Grant oh, Sawyer building yeah, that's going to be happening. True. The legislative count. Uh, interim? Yeah, the interim Senate uh, subcommittee on medical marijuana. I think that's about it. That's kind of, it's kind of a mouthful, but um, it is at the Grant Sawyer Building tomorrow at 9 a.m. Um, there are a variety of subjects that we're going to be discussing. I think um, one of them is uh, getting people their uh, medical cannabis cards in, in more of an expedited manner. Um, and I actually think that they have sped up the process uh, for what it used to be like four or five years ago. It takes a lot less... Uh, time. And then there is a discussion on whether to limit the number of cultivation facilities, a discussion of confidentiality of applicant rankings and operate a medical marijuana establishment, uh, the process and issuances of medical marijuana registry identification cards, and the discussion of confidentiality and the number of medical marijuana registry identification card holders. Um, mm-hmm. Also, it's planned to hear presentations on laws governing the driving under influence of marijuana, uh, the DUID bill, which we we fought to keep um, 
we fought to keep low, and now we need to re to, to revisit that issue. Yeah, that kind of got lost in the shuffle last mm-hmm. session. Yeah, there was so much going on. That one got kind of pushed to the side, but that one is definitely has to be worked on in this next, next session. Um, also, I think that a very important to a lot of patients he, that are currently in Nevada is to retain the right to grow, um, even if it's just those patients who got their cards before that. I know, um, I know we do have loopholes in the law, basically, that say if you are not going to be able to afford the medication, um, the, and you are low income the, and you're already growing that you get to continue to grow oh we know but we there are patients that wanted more black and white they don't want to jump through loopholes they want clarification that their this right is, is protected this forever is what I cannot do. and you know the the deal is uh some of these people are uh, i don't want to point fingers at anyone specifically because i'm not sure who is opposed to this or might be potentially opposed to this but the only people who are really gonna continue to grow after the dispensaries are open are people who are already doing it you're not gonna see a giant influx of personal grows for such a small number of plants it's similar to the beer brewing law like you know people it's allowed to brew you're allowed to brew beer and wine and all that kind of stuff in your house you don't see people doing it on a mass scale there are people who do it for fun or people who do it personally because they think they're very good at it but you're not going to see it on more of a mass scale. It doesn't affect their drop. It doesn't affect the liquor uh, the liquor industry enough for them to really take notice. And I think that that's what's going to happen with the medical marijuana community as recreational marijuana comes more into the fold. Also, I, I think that you're I think that you're right, Perry, um, because people that are growing already, people that are following the the law already, are are well versed on the law. If they're getting their cards now because they're hearing about it now, then I mean. Or is it, I mean, what is the seriousness of this? You know, or people that are moving here, are they're not moving here just to grow, I'm, not, I'm assuming? No, no, no one's going to move to Nevada to grow, that. exactly. Yeah, Kurt <laughs> hit that on nail on the head for sure. There are other states that are much more friendly to growing large amounts of cannabis if that's what people are going to do. The weather here just doesn't, doesn't work for that f- situation. I mean, most anywhere except in rural Nevada and... You know, their attitudes up there aren't exactly friendly toward it. So, you know, you're not going to you're just not going to see that here. Yeah, I think what we're mainly going to see is people that are going to grow are going to the people who want to know what's in their medication and, you know, have time and want, you know, want to produce their own medication. Because in all reality, uh, speaking as someone who does this on a small scale like this, the the value factor isn't that much you, you, i don't you know, know. Well, i think it does drop the price per ounce um well, considerably no. when you talk about the actual flower that you can use it's not not that great so of a you deal. like you get a lot more trim and stuff to make butters and oils and things like that with that you wouldn't normally have but when you when you take just the flower the top flower i'm di- i'm gonna disagree with you so, i'm gonna disagree so with you're you. thinking it's more like building a classic car like it's more just for the love you never really get your money out of it i yeah, think no it's, that's not true see i it can that go is, both ways. Having that a is, garden will nickel, nickel and dime oh, you to death. Okay. Like, <laughs> I think we're, we're coming into a break right now. We're going to come back to this heated discussion and our 420 moment. Uh, we'll see you in a moment. Finally, Nevada medical marijuana dispensaries are opening, but you must have your medical marijuana card to get inside. Call the friendly team at Karma Holistic Health Foundation, toll free, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Karma Holistic Health Foundation will give you legal access to medical marijuana. All veterans receive a discount, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Locally owned and operated TSI, Total Safety Incorporated, has kept our community safe since 1998. We provide superior services offering professional installation, local fire and burglar alarm monitoring, and the fastest response times in Las Vegas. We also offer armed and unarmed security, video security systems, access control, and fire safety installation and service. All of your security needs are covered. Call us at 702-967-0000. That's 702-967-0000 or visit us at TSIVegas.com. Do you need help getting your Nevada medical marijuana card? Dr. Reefer is now accepting new patients. There are no medical records required. We have a doctor on staff to give you a thorough physical examination. There is a 99% approval rate for patients. 
They also have a money back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Free consultation is available. Call 702-428-0000. 702-428-0000 to get your Nevada Medical Marijuana card today. Welcome back to Weekend 702 Radio Show. It's time for our 420 moment. Woohoo! Today we are going to honor federal judge Richard Posner, who says it is time to legalize cannabis. About time. It's about time. So what's, what's he been doing that he says he needs to legalize cannabis? Well, he, he's always been uh, against the war on drugs. He thinks, you know, it's stupid, basically, but... The thing on him is there are many voices in America that are calling for an end to cannabis prohibition. Poll after poll shows that a majority of Americans want to legalize cannabis. Colorado and Washington have already legalized it, and there's a good chance that Alaska and Oregon could be joining them by the end of the year. But what we really need is reform at a federal level. And at least one judge agrees, uh, Richard Posner. He's a judge for the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit and a senior lecturer at the University of Chicago Law School. Um, this is what Mr. Posner wrote or recently stated in an article for New Republic. The sale and possession of marijuana are en route to being decriminalized, and I am inclined to think that cocaine, heroin, methamphetamine, LSD, and the rest of the illegal drugs should be decriminalized as well, though not deregulated. They should be regulated by the Food and Drug Administration for safety like other drugs. And they should be taxed heavily like alcohol and cigarettes. Alcohol and cigarettes are recreational drugs too and quite possibly more destructive than the users of a the heroin? users. Yeah, <laughs> well, than pump, illegal pump drugs the are. And yeah, pump the brakes. Huh? <laughs> well, you know what? I, I really know actually I, I, I respect cow. his stand as, as a federal judge because you know what? Um, they've proven in countries that have decriminalized heroin and cocaine and, and everything else that the number of addicts neither rises nor falls. It remains at, a, at the at the rate it was at always, that they need social programs for people that are addicted to these drugs. They don't need to throw them in jail. People that are in jail don't get better. They just get to be better criminals. No doubt. That's, that's my belief. That's my personal belief. Um, well, I've gone back and forth on this with people about legalizing other drugs and i uh, man i i don't know about all that i've seen what what hard drugs do to people and i have too and uh it, it's not pretty um i've seen what know, prison does to people that yeah are on that's hard drugs true too. it sure. teaches them how to make the hard drugs or access the hard drugs easier it doesn't reform people prison does not in jail do not reform people, oh no doubt especially and for drug addiction well, now it teaches people more crime that's but, right but see it, it, that's why it's important somebody of the stature of Judge Posner, you know, after the Congress just voted to stop the medical marijuana raids. Yeah. You know, and somebody from of his stature coming out and saying, you know, we need to cr- decriminalize it. So, Mr. Posner, we salute you. That's our 420 moment. That was a little controversial 420 moment. No exactly. And coming off of that, New York, New York, the state of New York officially becomes America's 23rd medical marijuana state. Woo-woo! Uh, Governor Cuomo officially signed the state's medical marijuana bill, making New York 23rd state. And um, looks like people there will have some more opportunities. What do we need? Um, After 11 years- more? Yeah, 11 more. After years of advocacy and intense last-minute negotiations between lawmakers, the bill was passed in the final days of the legislative session with an extraordinarily strong bipartisan uh, support. New York is the second largest state in the nation with the medical marijuana law. Um, we salute you, New York. I actually I know some people that went to New York to talk to the lawmakers there, and um, and he just got back from New York. And he was just telling me that that everything went very swiftly, um, but it w- it went into place very quickly. Very quickly. It's impressive for sure. We're uh, looking for that domino effect on the East Coast, similar to what we have on the West here. Let's see. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I wonder if they're going to start selling souvenir apple pipes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are those yeah, things yeah, yeah. called? Where you bore into the little pipe with that tool? 
Johnny Appleweed or something? <laughs> I, I think they're at Champs. Okay, I'm going to go look for one at Champs. It's like you bore into the apple and you make a pipe out of the speaking, apple. Speaking of Champs. Champs. Speaking champs of is champs. next week. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Well, for the, what is what is Champs for our uh, uninformed listening audience? Champs they, is like going. That Champs is like going to the fair for a stoners. <laughs> Yay! It's they, like it's, they call it a subculture expo, but it's basically everything that you could want at at, at the best and biggest he- head shop there is. You know, all the latest, all the latest uh, rigs and 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 pipes and everything else out there, and some. Great glass and artworks and live glass blowing and, going uh, on and glass games. So and weekend we'll have a booth there if I'm not mistaken. Yes, weekend we'll have a the... we'll have a booth. We'll be right next to Pulse Glass. This champs. Yay, Pulse. So, yep, Pulse Glass. One of our sponsors uh, does great things. Uh, makes wonderful quality uh, glass too. So. Definitely. Definitely. Well, there's a so champs is next week, and I think that we're going to have what Kurt on a remote. And... It's next Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Correct? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So okay. I will be joining you via telephone next week from the I booth. I will be working at the booth at champs. Nice, that's and that's a... at the North Hall of the Las Vegas Convention Center next yes. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Yes. Yeah, and if you are a business owner, if you have a head shop or a glass shop, or you um, uh, are a business owner in the industry, you can get into champs for free. So, um, for all of you business owners that don't know about Champs, uh, it's it's a great thing. I really love the Champs after parties. Oh, my. And yeah, be, we're hoping to get in on some of those, definitely. And it'll be great for those uh, bigwigs that were just awarded such lavish contracts in our community to uh, go and hobnob with the real folks that do this <laughs> thing. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. No doubt. Well, there's a small amount of news in Colorado I'd like to get to real quick. All right, let's hear it. Uh, well, starting Tuesday for the first time, if you are a Colorado resident, you can apply for a retail marijuana business license. What? This is a significant shift in the state's groundbreaking recreational marijuana laws, which first went into effect uh, on January 1st. Since then, only owners of medical marijuana businesses who are in, quote, good standing with the state have been allowed to apply for retail marijuana licenses. Now, any adult who has established residency in the state can apply for a medical or excuse me, for a recreational marijuana business license. And that is effective today. Wow. The doors have just blown open in Colorado. Now, of course, existing medical uh, marijuana businesses are demonstrating a commitment to following the laws and making the system work. And, you know, of course, they have preference and all that kind of good stuff. But. You have to look and keep in mind that a lot of these municipalities are already trying to, you know... Limit? Yeah, limit or outright ban these dispensaries. Um, You know, Colorado Springs, huge market, outright bans, no dispensaries thus far. So, you know... Temper your temper our excitement for sure as we continue to work with the local regulators now that the state regulation is in place in order to break into these individual markets. For you sure. know, I heard a thing about Colorado, and I don't have all the facts in front of me, but this lady that was growing medical marijuana was charged and arrested, and she was acquitted. So the police had to return her product back to her because she was acquitted. They returned to her 55 dead plants. So she sued them. She sued them. Yeah. You know what they gave her? A license for one of these dispensaries. Instead of yeah, you know what this, what's funny they about this? They rewarded her with a, a cannabis license. That's In, instead of instead of paying for her. I'll take that deal. That's a, <laughs> that's a wow. I didn't know they had the authority to such to a do deal. That. Yeah. yeah. If if you're ever arrested and uh, the charges are dropped. Or you are acquitted, whatever property the police sees, they have to return to you. Or and, repay you for that property. And because she was she was going to sue them for damaging her medication. and Did she come in and offer them the deal like the district attorney does? <laughs> hey, I'm going to oh. offer you a deal. No, I think they offered <laughs> it to her. Oh man, that is that is really interesting. Um, and the other thing that I w- wonder about is what did they value those plants at when they were going to return them? Because I know what oh. they value them when when the cops say we seized seized five plants and it was a half a million dollars. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's like how much were those plants? I, I, I've worth? always wondered how they get that math for sure. How they how they calculate how much per plant is worth? Because they always they're like you know Jen hit it on the head for sure. They kind of over exaggerate the. Uh, 
the value sometimes. Yep. Well, we we've got That's more right. from uh, That's right. How from local we, news. Yeah. Well, hold on, there's another big national news story. How could we have forgotten Washington State today started recreational cannabis sales? Today, and six months after Colorado started selling recreational cannabis, Washington got their stuff together and opened up shop today. I can't believe we almost passed that up. And Seattle's already reporting a shortage. <laughs> well, exactly. Seattle uh, expects it to be 15 to $20 per gram uh, for recreational. Wow. And they can only sell, uh, it says that they can only sell glass paraphernalia and small labeled plates that read fine jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That's funny. That's hilarious. Um, th- this is hilarious. So they're, Seattle's first pot shop is poised to open today. So James Lathrop uh, opened his pot shop down in uh, downtown Seattle. Um, he said that he moved 10 pounds of marijuana in on Tuesday, and he said that he expects to sell it out by the end of the day. 15 My God. T- 10 Wow, 10 pounds. pounds. Wow. And this shop just opened today, but I was reading in the news that they actually just issued the licensing licensing for these shops to open two days ago. So these, pe- these people are completely new business owners. They, no, they he, was, he wasn't a Though pre-existing a medical. medical? Uh, he might well, have. He, medical. Mu- he must have. Yeah. Uh, let's see. There's a story One. in Florida. What's going on with Florida? Let's see. Florida's push for medical marijuana supported by attorney John Morgan out of Jacksonville. Uh, Jacksonville-based attorney John Morgan has given a multi-million dollar donation to the medical marijuana campaign in Jack in Florida. <clears throat> Jacksonville.com reports that he will now invest even more in helping seriously ill Floridians find relief. Morgan has added $4 million of his own money in support of Amendment 2, a medical marijuana ballot initiative that will be voted on in November. Morgan claims that his support of the amendment is personal. His father and brother have used marijuana medically to alleviate pain from cancer and paralysis, respectively. An over uh, marijuana, or excuse me. The marijuana policy project has reported that an overwhelming majority of Florida voters support allowing adults to use medical marijuana. A Quinnipiac poll reported that medical marijuana has an 88 percent approval rate. Amendment two needs only 60 percent support in order to be adopted. Wow. Florida lawmakers passed a bill earlier this session that is supposed to permit a limited number of patients to access specific low THC, high CBD marijuana oils to, uh. to treat seizure disorders. But I'm not a I'm not a big fan of those. No, I'm not a big fan of those either. The high CBD oils and low THC, oil, uh, low THC. I mean, they're not psycho effect, uh, psychoactive, but they don't have a lot of effect on pain. CBDs are, you know, you're kind of curative and stuff like that, and anti-spasmodic, anti-seizure medication. But with, in cutting the THC out, you've just you've just cut out a major component of the plant that will help you. So it's just like cutting CBDs out. Well, you no know, doubt. It hurts I, you too. I don't know how to look at it. Whether it's just like I should look at it as a good foot in the door, no matter what. Like these people are willing to look at any marijuana-related re- medicine whatsoever, and we can build off of that, or to kind of take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, so you I'm, can try. I'll, I'll look at the glasses half full if I can. That's true, and that you know it's God's little uh, waiting room. So we'll just have to wait for what three, four months, and the public opinion will change again. <laughs> you, you never know. Um, I got a Pew Research uh, survey here. Uh, okay. We have a. Uh, it comes from a story about the unlikely pairing of Tea Party Rand Paul and Democrat Cory Booker teaming up to protect protect state medical marijuana programs. Um, the Senate's going to vote on a bipartisan amendment offered by them. Uh, you know what? This is some, this is what we were talking about before. Yeah. The, um, yeah. That amendment that they did. You know, and it mentioned that, um, what is it? Uh, nearly three in four Americans, including 78% of independents, 71% of Democrats, and 67% of Republicans, believe that efforts to enforce marijuana laws cost more than they are worth. Similar numbers. I do. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Definitely do. Eighty percent of Democrats, seventy six percent of independents, and sixty one percent of Republicans favor making medical marijuana legally available. So there's a movement. There is a movement among the people. You're talking about what's going on in Florida and this is nationally and it seems like Republicans need to work reach out to their party. Well, I do have I do have a list of five conservatives that unexpectedly support marijuana reform. Uh, we have Pat Robertson who saw the light. 
We have David Koch. He's a, a billionaire businessman. The Koch brothers. Koch brothers. Wow. Oh, really? But yeah. they're on both sides of that. So like one's on one side, the other's on the other. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Michelle Malkin. Uh, she's a conservative columnist, and sure. um, she has an illness in her own family that's treated with medical marijuana, and it's influenced her to speak up about how legalization is a bipartisan issue. Uh, then we have Glenn Beck. From Fox News. <laughs> okay, yeah, that <laughs> my tongue almost fell out on that one. Um, and he says, I think it's about time we legalize marijuana. Um it's very surprising for someone in recovery from alcohol and drug abuse, but he says he's never encouraged people to consume cannabis or any other recreational drug. However, as a practical matter, uh, he knows that marijuana prohibition is not only failed, but it causes the black market r uh, violence to rise. So, Glenn Beck, that's a different, that's a different approach. And uh, last but not least, we have uh, Texas Governor Rick Perry. He does favor <laughs> a Tenth Amendment approach by letting states... Sure. Sure. Um, State their own medical marijuana laws without federal interference, which is very significant coming from a possible contender in the 2016 Republican presidential nomination. And he says, quote, if you want to go somewhere where you can smoke medicinal weed, then you ought to be able to do that. Yeehaw. Well, let's we'll see what happens in Texas. The Marijuana Policy Project is pushing hard there right now, so we'll see what happens. I'm, uh, I'm excited to see the possibilities of that state turning green. You know, I think, I think that he was possibly enjoying a little medical marijuana before he had that one debate oh, yeah. where he no forgot doubt. what the third department he would eliminate was. Oh, yeah. he, he, that was terrible. But, you know, it, it, my head will spin if the Republican-controlled House passed that medical marijuana protection bill and the Democrat-controlled Senate does not. That will, you know, it has to happen. I mean, I already emailed my, my senators and I've, you know, reached out and done what I could. I would definitely encourage all of our listeners to contact our senators. Boehner won't and, do it. Oh, Boehner's got to move the bill in the House, and he won't do it. I mean, Mike McCarthy, the new, uh, the new uh, air canter, he ain't gonna do it. Well, the House, the House voted on it. We're looking for the Senate now, desperately. So we'll see. They voted on that. Yeah, yeah. We're looking for the Senate version of the bill to pass now. That's why this whole Rand Paul Cory Booker thing is such a big deal. You know, we really want the Democrat-controlled Senate to go for it. Just call Harry or you know. Email Harry Reid and Dean Heller and let them know. You know, you go to marijuanapolicyproject.com. They have a little pre-made letter that you just, you know, click your name and sends it off to them, and they send the automatic response back to just let it be known. Well, Junior's pushing these groups, so maybe Daddy will get up on it. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. No doubt. We're, ta we're talking about what, Rory? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. ran into him at the commission meeting a couple weeks ago and invited him on our show. He's never got back to me. Well, you know, he's well, he not, wasn't not treated really very good. well by the uh, by the no. county commission. No, Rory no. wasn't, and he and you know, to tell you the truth, you know, I like him and stuff, but he's not a really dynamic speaker. He kind of follows his dad that way, but you know, they both got millions of dollars, so no, no doubt. I just, yeah, I'm gonna. You, you're gonna stay from there. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go there. I, I, can you post that Rostin June seventh story to Facebook? If I said it to you, that'd be interesting. Yeah. Follow up on the whole. Check for that Ralston story on the Weekend uh, Facebook page. And the Ralston story. What's the What's the subject of the Ralston story, Raymond? Uh, we only have one minute. I really can't get yeah. into the gist of it. But it, it just looks like some an appearance of some improprieties with the licensing. Awarding in, by the county in Clark County. Yes. Oh well, there's a news flash. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, All right. Well, we're gonna uh, go on break, and we're gonna come back. We have a guest in in um, house. His name is Tommy, Tommy Grow. We're gonna talk about MZ Twelve X, and it's a um, a new way to extract your extract your THC, right? Yeah, extra, yeah, make, make a better oils bigger, and waxes. Better waxes. All right. Better oils and waxes. The Vaughn Dank Group offers turnkey solutions for all your cannabis needs, bringing transparency and responsibility to a young budding industry. 
helping patients by producing the cleanest, safest, and most potent medicines and infusibles possible. The Von Dank Group is a design, management, and consulting corporation with over 30 years of industry experience and knowledge of the dispensary, edibles, infusible kitchen, and large-scale cultivation of cannabis manufacturing facilities. Let the Von Dank Group help you grow your cannabis business from seed to green. www.vondank.com Are you looking for a new career? For the next 20 years, 10,000 people per day in America will be turning 65. They're going to need somebody to take care of them. If you're interested in a career in home care or assisted living care, log on to ProCaregivers.com to find out how you can have a well-paying and secure job in this growing industry. The need for caregivers is so urgent that some classes are subsidized by the state, so you may not pay anything. ProCaregivers.com is certified by the state of Nevada and other states for post-secondary education training certification and can help place you in a job once your training is complete. Log on to ProCaregivers.com for more information today. Cannabis has been used as a healing medicine for over 5,000 years with no toxic side effects. Is it right for you? The professionals at Dr. Reefer are here to help. Now accepting new patients, make an appointment today at 428-0000. Bring your medical records, or if you don't have them, their staff will work to document your qualifying condition with a 99% approval rate. If you have any of the following conditions, cancer, AIDS, muscle spasm diseases, severe nausea, severe pain, Crohn's disease, glaucoma, or PTSD, call Dr. Reefer today for your free consultation and their money-back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Call 702-428-0000 to get your Nevada medical marijuana card today. Welcome back. This is the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. So uh, we got a studio guest here. We got uh, Tommy Grow in the uh, studio and Ferris. Um, first, I'd like to read a news, a news article that came out on Channel 8 this week uh, from George Knapp that did some investigating on and he just posted this on July 3rd. Um, Las Vegas, uh, explosions caused by methamphetamine leads are, are all but gone from southern Nevada neighborhoods, but a new and similar, similar threat is popping up with greater frequency in homes and apartments all over the Las Vegas Valley. Changing attitudes and laws about marijuana have given rise to homemade labs designed to create highly concentrated forms of pot, but making, making it is dangerous, not only for the participants... Uh, the end product takes several forms and is known by many names. Oil, honey, wax, just a few. Dabs. Dabs. Yeah. These concentrated forms of marijuana contain five times as much THC, the active ingredient, as regular weed. Uh, th- more and more people are, their they're bathtub scientists are popping up all over making their own oil. And there's there's been some disastrous results. Um these these butanes and stuff that they're using are highly explosive. And uh, we've had... a, a, a We've had dozens of injuries, and Colorado's reported more than 30 oil-related explosions this year alone. So four times as many as last year. So it is a growing problem. Um, the other issue with butane is the is the residue of butane that is on your medication. If you have cancer, if you have chronic pain, if you have a chronic disease, and you're using the dabs or the honey oil or, or you know, BHO, um, you're also putting chemicals back in your body that, that do have residue. And people people say, okay, well, BHO, uh, the residue, residue is all off of all off of the product but in a recent like um in a recent cannabis cup in california out of 50 samples only two samples um had the butane completely washed off of them every other sample 48 of them were over the levels of accepted human use for butane um so welcome to our show tommy thank um you, thank you um, you've got some input on this and, and the dangers of this and, and maybe a possible solution. I have actually some information about uh, sorry. Uh, some information about that actually that last uh, thing you talked about how some of that butane was pushed through at this uh, event and uh, tested high. Yes. And it's because of a lot of the producers of this, because uh, I'm in the industry, I, I, I deal with a lot of the producers. Okay. And um, they they all got sold this, this product and butane. And four producers were able to release this, these cans, uh, different producers. And mm-hmm. the each one had to put something different as a propellant within that can to get this gas to come out. And uh, so... This is why everybody kind of jumped on the bandwagon saying, oh, N-butane is the cleanest 
gas, and it is the cleanest gas as far as not being in a can. Okay. Um, but as far as making wax with it, it still never comes out of the product. Um, okay. It's always, once it's in, it's never, there's no process that you can completely get every bit of it out. Okay, okay. for those of you that aren't really familiar with this, um, this process, you would put your, you would put your leaves and your flowers and your trim and, and stuff that, what, is already dried and cured? Yeah, basically, dried, you, you, at you, least? you get your, your substrate, basically your flower or trim, okay. and you put it in a tube, um, and you would uh, push this gas is the, is, the, is the process through this tube and have it have the other end over a container of some sort. Okay, um, and you, you put like a filter on it um, to filter And you that. put a filter, of course, so that the, uh, the material won't fall through. And uh, so a lot of these people that were exploding were, were doing this process into a small container. And this small container didn't have enough air ratio for its mass. And so when you're blasting gas into this, it pools up and it rolls on itself. Okay. And what's, happen- what's happening is it's building up and, it, and it's flowing out. And people aren't seeing that it's... it's, it's Not dissipating? Y- you can't see it. It, it, it. It's heavier than air and it just lays along the ground. And all it takes is a little bit of static electricity. And next thing you know, you have an explosion. So these people are in an enclosed area with like maybe a water heater. Like if you're in a garage and suddenly it, that... It could be a turned on light switch. It can be actually outside. Too, wow. Because it depends on how much you're actually doing. And a lot of the explosions are because these people are going, okay, I'm going to do a pound. And I have four tubes and I have 18 cans of butane. And I'm going to blast it all through it within 10, 15, 20 minutes. And they don't have anything to dissipate. And they have these fans the, that are blowing, the- but they're sitting in a garage. You know, that's one, that's one way they're blowing up, okay? And, and a lot is, is not there because of the extreme caution that's taken when you make this medicine, okay? And so the, you're, you're here to talk to us about an organic product at uh, dimethyl ether. Yes. Um, and yes. it does have a propellant um, that is a CO2 propellant. Yes, completely CO2. So it's, you know, it's, it's very, very clean. Um, it's, um, it just, it, it gives out a great product. I, I've used it and I, I've been, I've been, my, my battle started with oxycodone, and I want to okay. start there because that's very important to me to get this out, is okay. that I've gotten off of pills with yep. dabs. And, and that's, 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 that's a huge statement. That is a huge statement, and, and, and to, get off of, to get off of anything that has that type of physical addiction is, is uh, commendable. I heard it's, it's extremely hard to do that. And so what the, how I've gotten to this conclusion is that I was practicing in my home making this, getting okay. all the information. I'm very critical on how I can do this. And it was for myself. Uh-huh. And so I practiced the at-home use or the at-home production of this wax. And, well, the, um, last part, uh, the last part of this is uh, usually a purging or a vacuum process. Yes. Um, especially with butane, you put it in some type of a vacuum um, container and, and vacuum out the rest of whatever the impurity is. D- is there this step with this dimethyl ether? Um, it's... it's it can be done, but it's not necessary because butane is never put into the product. Um, and basically what happens is this dimethyl ether, it's much colder than butane. So it's going to extract much faster. It's the same process as the butane extraction, but it doesn't have the explosion rate. Uh, it's, it's like a flame up. Like if you were to go to a hibachi grill and you see that flame reach above your face and you're like, whoa. You know, we so, really talked about it yesterday about how you could really translate it to being a flamethrower versus a grenade exactly and that's really where it comes to because the flash point as opposed to explosion point are the two variables and that that's that is what saves lives because that's not the only way that people are exploding the other way is they do a winterization process after the blast they're adding it to alcohol okay and they're and they're 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 uh, transferring the alcohol molecule you know the thc molecule onto the alcohol molecule which releases the butane but with amateurs, they put this into a refrigerator, and then there's butane releasing in a refrigerator. It basically oh turns into a bomb wow. the size of a refrigerator in your garage or in your house. Heaven forbid and house. you go to sleep, and then 3 o'clock in the morning, you yeah, wake up to a huge explosion, and your whole house has just released from the foundation and re-sat down. Yeah, oh, that's horrible. That's the type of explosion well, that we're not only about. that, I mean, I, I assume that the paramedics would be there, then the oh, cops would everything. be there. Oh, yeah. and, and, and nowadays, it'd be a whole bad scene, Nowadays, really. they actually know, you know, a couple of years ago, they didn't know what was going on um, as far as lawmakers and all this. And now they're being educated, 
now they know. So then they now they have the signs of what what is. Well, know? the good thing yeah, that's about hilarious. So, I, so, yeah. I know I know what you're talking about. So like I had years ago, they uh, uh, like cops had come through and search places and not find like Keith and not find yeah, they didn't all know sorts what it was. of different things. And you sure. go there and like. Wow, they got well, like a half an ounce of weed, and they left all this other stuff. Right. What a well, it's because dummy. of us that they're educated now. Yeah. Oh well, uh, it's our fault. <laughs> well, we're well, educating the I'm right people. I'm not going <laughs> to shut up, Ferris. I'm not. We're, we're right. We're educating the right people. That's right. You know, the patients yeah. deserve to know this information for, sure, for themselves do. and to spread yeah. it. And it's you know all all this is about, and why I'm here today is is really to to talk about organic MZX. It, so it's organic MZX. How can you order this product? Um, it's. I, I just put up a, a website, and uh, it's called organicmz12x.com. And um, okay, and you can also um, uh, like us on Facebook, Organic MZ, uh, MZ12x, um, and Tommy Grow. Are you on Facebook as well? Um, I am, and uh, I am. Uh, I am. I am. He are, is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds kind of regretful. I, I know those regrets. Well, well no. I was just going through this new, newfound self, and I, I've been going through this thing on Facebook where it kind of steals some of your freedom um, mm. from, from where you're going and, and what you're doing. And, and so I, I just thought I'd do a little test for myself and, uh, and see know, how, how deleting myself would make me feel so I'm not giving so much energy out. Um, and it's well, just a personal decision. And about, okay. So that's why I had that, you know. That hesitancy. Okay. <laughs> that was the hesitation because yeah. when I saw it, I was like, oh, well, he's back because I got a friend request from him. I'm yeah. like, okay. Well, one thing, <laughs> I went, just a couple of steps that I want to talk about. about sure, the, first. Uh, about it is that the product itself is 100% biodegradable. It's refined 12 times. It's got a lower explosion point than the petroleum-based solvent that we were talking about, which is what makes it safer and cuts out a huge portion of, of the dangers. Sure. It's safe to the environment. It's harmless to any living human, animal, or plant. Obviously, if you're dead, it's pretty much over. Then uh, <laughs> it, it leaves no odor behind. It's color-free. It's residue-free. It's heavy metal-free. Absolutely no toxic. Removes more trichomes and oils than using butane. I'll just say that one more time for you people that really like to increase there. It removes more trichomes and oils than regular butane. It preserves characteristics of the organic origin and produces three to times the amount of product in return over butane. Wow, so, now that, that's, a, that's a heavy one too, Pro, um, produces three times the product. Yeah, in that's less the beauty, time. That's the beauty of the product is that it's colder it, it flows through the tubes faster. And so instead of your extraction time being 15 minutes of being under danger of exploding, um, you have maybe 45 seconds of um, a danger of maybe seeing a flamethrower. Well, and, and you know, in this, and this, for those of you that don't the, know, and that's in the, worst the, the case freezing scenario, process and, and the cold process is what breaks off the trichromes off of the bud itself and, and breaks off the... Um, the trichromes and the and the essential oils from the from the medication itself uh, to strip them. So the main reason I wanted to be on the radio today was just to get out that there is a safe alternative to making wax, and um, it's called Organic MZ12X, and uh, it, it, it's going to save lives. I, I think that the only way people are dying from marijuana these days is these explosions. It's not the people themselves that are taking the medication, but it's the producer of the medication or the and DEA. Or the, or DEA, the DEA, of course, yes. But, you know, <laughs> their funding is, is nearly gone. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. The evil empire is falling. Uh, uh, so, the, so this is really timely that you've, you've come in to talk to us about this, just as uh, George Knapp and the I-Team started talking about the dangers of this and, and the increased uh, dangers of this in, in Nevada. Um, and I encourage you, Tommy, to come out tomorrow to a, our advisory meeting. Um and that's at the Grant Sawyer Building. Can you give us the address, Kurt? 555 East Washington, room 4401. And it's at 9 a.m., so please be there at 9 a.m. We you. also have champs on July 15th through 17th. Uh, let's see. Do we have anything else in the news? Our pool party. Our pool party is six on the 26th and 6-year and six, and six anniversary. But we can announce that more as it comes up. Um I think that's about it from the news of cannabis as it pertains to Nevada. And join We Can at WeCan702.org, WeCan702.com, or on Facebook or on Twitter. You know, you can get a hold of us. All right, guys. Have a great week and be safe. Um, 
from We Can 702 and Kurt Dukach and Raymond Fletcher. We wish you a safe and a sane week. <laughs>